Hello cookbook friends, this is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and today I'm excited to look through Bottom of the Pot because I love Persian cookbooks and I love Middle, Middle Eastern food. The author is Naz Doravian, Persian Recipes and Stories, and I took a cooking class here in the Seattle area a couple years ago pre-pandemic, and the Iranian uh, cooking instructor came and showed us how to make rice like this, Mine came out a little burn, but it's supposed to be crispy and toasted, and I prefer fluffy rice, but I'm working on it. This came out in 2018. The publisher is Flatiron Books. Gorgeous photos so far. For Luna and Soleil, who light up my days and nights. Mm, I see some tea. Oh, I see a beautiful rolled cake with pistachio and flowers on top. Mm. Let's check out the table of contents. Mazzy, which is appetizers and accompaniments, and then soups, and then jewels, jeweled rice, sole, stews, bread, Iranian frittatas and egg dishes, yum, looking forward to that, meat, fish, and vegetables, stuffed and rolled, drinks, sweets, and epilogue. So here's the prologue, which I'll go read when I'm not on camera with you. Is it long? And the introduction. Making it delicious. Mm. The spice cupboard. Yeah, good luck finding barberries. <laughs> saffron, of course. You were guessing you were going to need some saffron. Ooh, dried damask rose petals. Good luck. Probably try Amazon. Okay, a perfect bite. Music and poetry. Ah, we're in the first chapter, I think. Okay, fresh herb platter. One thing I learned from my Persian cooking class was they use so many herbs, you're going to be chopping all day and night. <laughs> they love their fresh herbs. Here's a recipe for eggplant dip with kashk. Ooh, and there's a picture of it. It's hard to photograph eggplant and make it look attractive and delicious, and they did a good job cheese and walnut wrap. I remember cooking with lots of walnuts in that class. Pomegranate marinated olives. Ooh, that sounds good. And then I'd have pomegranates to put in my cocktail tonight. What is this? This is summer squash yogurt dip, I believe. I think. Ooh, yogurt beet dip. Look how colorful that is. Wow. Borani ya labu. And this is a lentil dip. Yes, Persians use lots of lentils. And an arugula orange fennel salad, such as you could find in any cookbook across the world, because it's delicious and beautiful. It doesn't have to just be Persian. This, I see a lot of pomegranates in there. Okay. A green herb salt. I'm not making my own salts, I'm sorry. Walnut verjuice dip. Raw green almonds and sour green plums. I've never heard of such a thing. Wow. I would try that, would you? I totally would. Sour cherry and feta crostini. Yum. Love the photography. Eggplant and herb pickles. And now we're in the soup chapter. And I have to set the cookbook down for a second because it's really heavy. Let me find a good page to show you. Fruit soup. What? This is fruit soup. Hmm. Okay. I need to get a cookbook stand that I can hold or something. Lentil and beet soup. But then it would be hard to turn the pages. Butternut squash soup. I didn't know the blue butternut squash is there. I thought that was a new world food. Well, maybe they adapted it. I don't know. Okay. Wish soup. Now we're in the rice section, and they're going to teach us to make this crunchy bottom of the pan rice. Jewels. I like making jeweled rice, except I can't keep raisins in the house because they're toxic to dogs, and I have naughty pantry food stealing dogs. Mm. So here's step-by-step -step photos for how it should look. And I definitely recommend watching a video on how to make this too on YouTube because it's kind of tough. Tips and reminders, a huge page on tips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's all the types of rice you can make. This is green bean rice. Baked saffron yogurt rice with chicken, which I think is this picture. Lots of rice going on. Lentil rice. It's a staple. It's basically like pasta, the pasta of Persia. Dill rice with fish tadig. And here's a, I don't know what this is called, but I think I see olives. Woo! A dead bug just flew out of the cookbook and I almost screamed my head off. Okay. Here's rice with tomatoes and potatoes. Must be one of those library bugs that tries to eat books. 
Let's hope it really was dead. Okay, stews, Korish. This will be good for autumn and winter especially, won't it? How about, ooh, what's this? This is eggplant stew. Nice and hearty. Okay, more stuff is falling out of this book. Korish Gourmet Sabzi Fresh Herb Stew. I'm doing a good job of not screaming on camera in case these bugs are crawling on me. It might just be pieces of paper. Let's hope. Okay, meat and yellow split pea stew. Hey, that sounds pretty flexible. You can use whatever meat you want to. This is a sour chicken stew. They definitely like sour flavors in Persian cooking. And now we're in a new chapter, which is non bread. Yes. And Persian, like many Middle Eastern cultures, has flatbreads. But check this out. That's not a flatbread. This is called Armenian sweetbread. Gata. Hmm, looks good to me. Lots of non recipes. And now we're in cuckoo. They said it, not me. Iranian, Iranian, excuse me, frittatas and egg dishes. Light, okay. Ooh, fresh herb cuckoo. My children would never eat that because it's so green. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is zucchini cuckoo. And now we're in the meat, fish, and vegetables chapter because I can't show you every page and every picture, although I'd like to. Everyday turmeric chicken. Great for weeknight dinners. Here's sumac cal cauliflower. That would probably be the first thing I would make out of this cookbook today. But I don't have cauliflower in the house. Stuffed branzino. Sour pomegranate and walnut kebab. I knew there's going to be some kebabs in here. Roasted squash and grapes. Oh, I can't keep grapes in the house because of the aforementioned dogs. Stuffed and rolled. I didn't know they used grape leaves like Greek people do. Stuffed eggplant. Ooh, this is something. What is this? Well, this is grape leaves. Oh, stuffed grape leaves. Don't know what they're stuffed with, but in my house it would not be meat. And here's some family cooking together. Yay. Sardine cakes, meat pasties, stuffed meatballs. I bet you think that looks really good. Now we're in the drinks chapter. Is it all going to be tea? Because I don't think Iranians drink honey and vinegar sharbat. I don't think they drink alcohol. Rose and lime sharbat. Perfect for summer. Persian tea, chai, mm-hmm. Cantaloupe slushy, yum, but I would add vodka. And the last chapter, I believe, is going to be the sweets. Yes, this is an awesome cookbook. I might have to buy my own copy because this is library. Boglava cake. And something pretty. Here's the roulette cake. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm going to let you see this really close up because that's amazing. Wow. Okay. Quince and Labney Tart, Orange Musgotti, whatever that is that looks stunning. And we're getting down to the end of the book, so I should stop showing you stuff. Wow, that was Bottom of the Pot. Fantastic Persian cookbook. So glad I looked through it. So glad you watched with me. If you'd like to see more cookbook look-throughs and reviews, visit the cookbookdivas.com website and blog. We post about cookbooks on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, and we have a podcast, too, called Cookbook Divas, because we couldn't think of a better name. Bye!